Labor has suffered a dramatic drop in support in the latest News Hub Read Research poll. Last night, News Hub revealed Labor's down 6.1 points to 38.2%, with National shooting up 9.2 points to 40.5. National Party leader Christopher Luxon is with us now. Good morning. Good morning, Ryan. How are you today? Good. How are you? Congratulations on your poll numbers. Oh, thank you. Look, I mean, they're pretty encouraging, but uh, I think what they speak to is just the fact that the New Zealand public f are really feeling this cost of living crisis that we've been talking about for some time now, and, you know, they're struggling to get ahead, and that's really what's driving a lot of this. How did you, how did you celebrate those numbers last night? Because you must have been, a bit, you must have been <laughs> stoked. Yeah, well, we don't get too excited about it. Um, you know, we really just sort of, there's a number of polls that have come through. What they're sort of saying is, look, we're making progress over the last five months, which is great. Uh, but really, I think the drivers for what's happening is that the public are just sort of feeling it's a government that's all spin, no delivery, and it doesn't get things done. And I think, you know, that's what's really driving a lot of this, perf this performance. To govern, you'd need the Māori Party on these numbers. Have you spoken to them lately? Uh, look, I talk a lot to Rawari, just, we're, you know, we're quite friendly, we both came in in class of 2020, but frankly I'm just fixated on making sure the national vote gets as large as it possibly can, that we get our messages out to as many communities across New Zealand, uh, and we've still got a lot of work to do over the next 18 months, so that's really what I'm focused on for now. Realistically, to govern though, you would have to go it alone with ACT, wouldn't you? I mean, th there's no way you could enter some kind of three-way deal between the Māori Party and ACT because they don't like each other. Yeah, look, as I said, those are uh, thinkings and accommodations that would need to happen down the road. But for right now, you know, we've still got a lot of work to do in the National Party to get to where we want to get to, which is making sure we're making our case strongly, we're coming up with the policies and the ideas that we can take to the election, and that we're ready to go from day one, that we're not going to be doing 230 working groups and endless reviews, yeah. uh, that we've got the ideas... Totally, but to you, must have thought, you must have thought, you must have given it some thought, I mean, how, the, how it might shake down um, after an election, you know, if it was that close. Do you think... Would you be open to working with ACT and the Māori Party if you had maybe one as a coalition and one as a confidence and supply? I mean, are all these things playing on your mind? Options? Uh, they're de I can tell you right now, Ryan, they're definitely not playing on my mind right now. Uh, what I've got, what I'm focused on is just quarter by quarter making sure the National Party is really delivering for the New Zealand people and starting to really focus on the things that matter, and that is, of course, the economy, which is really concerning everybody. Totally. Are you sticking to and you will not resolve from getting rid of the Māori Health Authority that the government's going to enact? Yeah, look, as we've said before, we're going to scrap the Māori Health Authority and, and that's we're going steadfast. to beef it up the Māori Health... That's yes, it is. Yeah, okay. We're going to put that into the Māori... You will not... Māori you... Health... Th Māori Health... Uh, ma no Sorry. back down on that. There'll, there'll be no back down on that, even if you need the Māori Party. Look, we're, we're, not, we're going to scrap the Māori Health Authority because we think it's better delivered through a Māori Health um, okay. Directorate within the Ministry of Health, and we don't want two systems in it delivering our public health services. Fair enough. Let's talk about the, the budget, and you gave a, a speech yesterday. So this $6 billion in new spending that we're expecting from the Finance Minister in, in the budget, um, you said that was hard to justify and the plans might need to be revisited. You, but you have previously said that you would have spent $1.7 billion of that on tax cuts and the rest on other new spending. So, so what is it? Would you, if you were in charge right now, would you go the full $6 billion and do your tax cuts and the other spending, or would you be trimming? W what is your position? Well, look, what our position is that we fundamentally think we can continue to increase spending in health and education each and every year, and we don't want to see a diminution of those public services. But what we're really talking about here is that government spending is up 68%. We spend $52 billion more this year than we did in 2017. And the major thing to worry about is actually the $120 billion of existing spending and actually going through line item by line item with ministers and saying, hey, let's stop the programmes that aren't working, let's continue to do programmes that are working, but actually get generate savings and efficiencies in the spending that we've already got going on. There are some crazy things happening at the moment where the money is going to building uh, middle management and bureaucracy, and it's going to management consulting firms. It's actually not getting through to the front okay. line to deliver better outcomes. So we, what we're really talking about is a culture of financial discipline, yeah. and we're talking about making sure we've got targets and outcomes for people to focus on within the civil service. Okay. Doesn't answer the question, though, does it? 
the six billion dollars. Well, what I'm saying to you is those two things. Those two things, Ryan, are very linked. You know, you've got to interrogate existing spend and say what can you do better, yeah. uh, and how much can you save and generate. And you also have to ask the question, right, on top of the 128 billion dollars of extra 68 percent that we've spent already, yeah. do you really need to go spend another incremental six billion uh, out of that? But okay. you know, I can tell you, like, you know, every year in large organisations, you go through. Okay, so have you done budget that each and every year? And you try and find those efficiencies. Have you done we that with the government's with the government's books. Can you give me some examples? How much could you save on current spending? Wasted, useless well, programs? Look, I mean, yeah, I've tried... Yeah, well, look, I mean, what I've said to you is, look, there's already been, you know, 10,000-plus bureaucrats added into Wellington in the last four years. You'd have to go back through and say, what are all those individuals, what are all those people actually doing, and what, what extra services are they delivering for the New Zealand people? We've talked about the fact that we just don't think a half-a-billion-dollar restructure already on health care and billions to come is actually the way to go if you're not going to get improved health outcomes and all you're doing is rearranging people uh, in, in management structures within a, within a big bureaucracy. That sort of stuff isn't really value-adding. Um, I'd say to you things like, you know, I keep going on about the slow train from Hamilton to Auckland. I appreciate it's a small proportion. It is. Of it's total tiny. This is the thing. But, Whenever but, you but, give but, examples, yeah, they're but, quite small but, ones, no, no, aren't no. they? No, no, I can, I can give you more, but the point I'm trying to make is if you don't worry about $100 million, you're basically saying there's a culture of, there's no culture of fiscal discipline. You know, I can tell you Bill English or Nicola Willis, Will, Bill English, Nicola Willis will be worried about the $100 million because it actually speaks to a culture of, oh, well, that's OK, we won't worry okay. about that one. Um, uh, you know, so, so I think that's why if you don't worry about millions, you don't start worrying about the billions and that becomes a real problem. OK. Um, let's, very quickly, one of the things that they're going to attack you on hard at the election will surely be your plan to remove that top tax rate of 39%. Um, and they will paint you as this rich white dude who wants to give his other rich white friends a big tax cut, you know, to the tune of, I think, $18,000 yours would be um, annually. So how important is cutting that top tax rate to you? Will you be prepared to put that up to the sacrificial altar and get rid of it? Or are you 100% committed to that today? You will not be Prime Minister without it. Well, look, what I'm saying to you is this government's just going to spend, spend, spend. They're going to tax, tax, tax. We're starting to see that happen already. What we're saying is, look, you've got to look at the biggest settings that are driving the economy and powering it. And that's what my speech was about. It was saying, look, you've got to look at education, infrastructure, technology, the business environment and opening up to the world. A component of that is obviously taxes and incentives. There are some taxes and incentives like the Bright Line and the indestructibility that's added a tremendous amount of cost to rents. On the on 39%, all we're saying is, look, it's great. It, it's necessary to attract great talent, to retain talent, to get the right investment and to make sure that we stay globally competitive. So it's a piece of a lot of thinking and a lot of a plan that's coming together to say how do we actually build a more productive economy because yeah, that's but it's the a thing piece, that lifts wages well, for everybody. I know, I understand, why, I understand why you're doing it but I'm just saying is that something that you would resolve from or are you 100% committed to removing that, that top tax rate, the 39%? And it won't change, no matter what the political situation in the months um, and, and uh, you know, 18 months ahead. Well, what we've also said is that, yes, we've got a short-term plan around tax and taxation. Yes, we've signalled that any taxes the government's put in place over the course of this parliament we'd be looking to remove. But that'll come together in quite a comprehensive taxation and fiscal plan that we're taking to the election. And there's quite a lot of work and thinking that we've already started in that space. Uh, and so that's what we'll campaign on. This, this is, it's, sounding like, it's sounding like this could be for the chopping block, Chris, <laughs> if I'm being honest, the way that you're talking about well, it. Well, what... Yeah, well, what I'm saying to you is, yeah, we'll go to the election. We've got three things to do. Yeah, one is we've got a short-term idea on tax indexation. Two, we've sort of signalled, hey, listen, we're not up for all the tax increases the government's been piling through in this last parliament. But thirdly, and the most important thing, is we're going to come to you with a very comprehensive, well-costed fiscal and tax plan. And that may not include getting rid of the top tax rate? Well, as I said, we've signalled that those tax increases that came through with this government... Yeah, I know you've right signalled that, but it's, it's a very simple... All that stuff. Chris, come on, it's we're a very saying simple... over our first term, we take them away. OK, so you would, in that first term, no matter what come hell or high water, you're getting rid of that top tax rate? We're going to get rid of all existing taxes the okay. government's piled through right. in the last three, last, last three years. OK, Chris, thanks very much for your time this morning. National Party leader Christopher Luxon. Appreciate it, Ryan. 27 minutes after.